Hello, welcome back. So this is a video about what does the British flag mean? I mean, I know it's just kind of like a combination of, well, I guess I don't know, but it's a combination of, I think it's, you know, England is the middle. They have Scotland, which is all like the, the blue and the white um, diagonal lines and Northern Ireland's not even in there, I, I guess. But that that's kind of my guess. That's what I, I've seen before and heard. Um, could be wrong and that's why I'm watching this video. This is by real life lore and if you could add anything at the end of this um, let me let me know what you think let me know your thoughts and uh, any more information you could give me about this i'm trying to solely prep for my british citizenship test not not a real one just just online and record my reactions and see how well i do not uh not to become a, a citizen maybe someday but uh, until that time, let's uh, let's jump into this. The Union Jack. The British flag, if you think about it, is kind of a Frankenstein assortment of three different national flags. It's a combination of the flags of England, yes. Scotland, we'll and Ireland. Sorry, Wales. But that can't be the end of this video, yeah, so Wales, let's dig a Wales, Wales, sorry, here. Wales. To start with the flag of England, which can also be called St. George's Cross, we don't know exactly where or how it originated inside of England. It is known that in 1188, the kings of England and France both decided to go on a crusade together, and in order to distinguish their armies, the English used a white cross and the French used a red cross. Somehow and at some time, the English may have adopted the red cross that was used by the French. There is a legend that King Richard the Lionheart on the Third Crusade adopted the symbol for usage in the English crusading armies, but it's pretty unclear historically. The first recorded use of the red cross on a flag within England dates back to its use as a maritime flag used within the English Navy in 1545. During the English Reformation, St. George rose to become the primary patron saint of England, and all the religious flags other than his own were abolished within the country. This left a lot of room for his cross to become even more associated with England. Yeah. Moving on to the Scottish flag, which is also called St. Andrew's Cross, its origins revolve around the martyr of St. Andrew. St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland, and according to legend, he was crucified on wow. an X-shaped yeah, cross. The familiar X-shape with the image of St. Andrew crucified first began to appear in Scotland in 1180 during the reign of William Dang. I. That, that image cool. would also be depicted flag. on a official seals within Scotland during the late 13th century. The image of St. Andrew- Is that one of the oldest flags around, like in the world? I should, I should figure that out. I could, I could only imagine that that is, that is really, really, really old flag. Andrew would be removed to form a more simple X shape sometime in the 14th century. And then in 1385, the Scottish Parliament ordered that Scottish soldiers serving abroad in France had to wear a white X on their armor to distinguish themselves. The first confirmed historical usage of the familiar white X with a blue background on a flag inside Scotland was in 1542, three years before the English first used St. George's Cross in their navy. The first edition of the Union Jack flag originated in 1606. Three years earlier in 1603, James I of Scotland had inherited both the English and Irish thrones, and in addition to Scotland ruled all three wow. kingdoms. Wow. Despite how the three kingdoms were all ruled by the same monarch, they each remained separate. But James ordered a new flag to symbolize the union between his native kingdom of Scotland and and the Kingdom of England, and so two different versions. Thank goodness they did not use the one on the top right. That just looks so wrong, right? The one on the left is is better until Wales comes along, or wherever those other uh, red lines come from. Versions were created. There is the more familiar English version of the flag, which was used in England, and the less familiar Scottish version, which was of course used in Scotland. Both of these flags were used in limited forms because both kingdoms remained politically separate until the Acts of Union in 1707 formally united England and Scotland into the same country, Great Britain. After the Acts of Union, the English version of the flag became the official flag of the new country. But that still leaves out the red X shape, which symbolizes Ireland. The red X on a white background is known as St. Patrick's Saltire. It is a symbol of St. Patrick and began to be associated with Ireland as a whole only in the 1780s. It was adopted as the symbol of the Order of St. Patrick, which was an order created by the English King George III. Ironically, as a consequence of this, many Irish nationalists have rejected this flag as a British invention to represent Ireland for themselves. The flag had some usage in Ireland before 1783, but it's rather unclear. It was used on the coat of arms of the powerful Fitzgerald family in Ireland, and it also appears on the backsides of some Irish coins minted around 1480 in honor of the Fitzgeralds. So before 1801, Ireland had been a part of a personal union inside Great Britain, but on January the 1st, 1801, the kingdoms of Great Britain and Ireland were formally united into the nation now named the Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. In order to represent this addition of Ireland into the kingdom, the flag was again changed with a red... So I was confused on that. I, that that's what I was wrong with, and that's what I got corrected now. 
Um, I thought it was, it was the whales part. I don't know why. I, I know it has nothing to do with their flag, but uh, I just kind of thought those lines, the diagonal red lines were from Wales, but it's from Ireland. An X cross so that all three kingdoms would be represented on one single flag. Again, poor Wales. Even now, nobody has figured out a good way to fit you onto the already crowded flag. Even without representing Wales, crowded. this Union flag has remained in place even after the majority of Ireland left the United Kingdom. The red X cross now represents Northern Ireland, which still remains a part of the kingdom. In addition to being the flag of the United Kingdom, the flag has been used on several other national flags that used to be a part of the British Empire. It was a part yeah. of the United States' flag until yes. 1777 when a certain rebellion changed all of that. So, a part of the Canadian this. flag all the way up until 1965 when they voted Dang, to change it. That is old. Or not not old at all. Flip what I was saying. Yeah, that's not old at all. That's crazy. Wow. It's weird. A small part of the South African flag up to 1994 when apartheid finally ended, and continues to remain a part of the national flags of New Zealand, Australia, Tuvalu, the Cook Islands, Fiji, and the Canadian yeah, provinces of yes British Columbia, are. Ontario, Manitoba, and Newfoundland, as well as the United States state of Hawaii. And as for the oh, English flag with St. George's Cross, crazy. it is also found on the flag of Alberta, Canada. It's weird because Hawaii was, you know, it came into the uh, the Union or to, and became a state so, so long, what was it, 49? or 50 so it was either 49 or 50 uh 50th state it's either that or alaska um but that's pretty wild that that would be used um when it became a state so late Canada. with current events like the new zealand flag referendum and the scottish referendum to leave the united kingdom in 2014 the status of the uk flag around the world and the status of the uk flag itself is still subject to change what would the uk flag have looked like if scotland had voted to leave the union in 2014 would the united kingdom even have been called the united kingdom anymore what interesting future events might change this iconic flag yeah. leave your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you have not already thank you as always for watching I like that. It was uh, short and sweet, and I learned something. So maybe you did as well. Um, it's it is interesting. I like that a lot. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. I love I love just their flag in general. Um, it's just so well known around the world as kind of like this symbol of, I guess, a lot of things. Such a beautiful flag too. I love it. I love how it looks. Like the power of you know, a symbol of power, not a power of symbol. Uh, a symbol of power and. Um, Kind of like their union with all the other countries kind of mixed in around them. Um, you know, Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland. And then all of their islands and lands, you know, like Gibraltar and the Falkland Islands, stuff like that. Um, just kind of this, this union of around the world. And then like, the, like they said, their flag is still on, you know, Australia's and, and it was on Canada's. So until 1965. So... I love it. I love how it looks, and I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm glad that a lot of the countries that did have it, you know, like Australia has the colors, but the U.S. also kind of just kept the colors. I love I love the color scheme, and um, yeah, it, that was a, that was a good video. Let me know if there's anything else that they may have missed or what you could add to it. Um, I'd assume if you know Scotland ever broke off, which it doesn't seem like they will, um, they'd just you know keep the flag the same why would you change the flag that's like uh, that'd be my guess but let me know what you think and until next time thank you for watching and let me know any additional information you have about this have a good rest of your day